I'm Ian Somerville and in this video on requirements engineering I'm going to be looking at the processes that are involved, the, the different activities that go on in trying to elicit, analyse and understand system requirements. What's important to understand when we talk about requirements engineering processes is we can look at these processes in a range of different ways. There's not just one view of the process which tells the whole story. And I'm going to particularly focus here on these different process perspectives. The first of these perspectives is the relationship between the requirements engineering process and other activities in systems engineering. I'm deliberately talking about systems engineering rather than software engineering here because the requirements may not just be requirements on the software, they may be requirements on the system as a whole, the hardware, the people, the processes involved in operating the system. This picture shows that we can think of there being two distinct phases in requirements engineering. A system requirements engineering phase where we look at the requirements for the system as a whole and a software requirements engineering phase which takes these high level system requirements and where appropriate translates these into software requirements. You can see here that the system requirements engineering phase is followed by an architectural design activity where we try and design the broad overall structure of the system. We then think about how the system requirements are partitioned across that architecture. What bits of the architecture do what? And from that, we can derive the software requirements. So the software requirements, different will be spread across the system as a whole because different parts of the architecture will all be running their own software. And the picture also shows that there's a relationship between the requirements and the system validation processes. The aim of the system validation process is to demonstrate that the system implements the requirements as specified. Now we talk about requirements engineering as a separate process and there's a kind of implication that this is something we do as a discrete activity at the beginning of a software system development and that's it. Well, it's really not like that at all. There's a very close relationship between the process of system acquisition and procurement. What are we going to buy and requirements engineering? So we may constantly refine our requirements dependent on what we find out about what's available on the market. Nobody builds systems from scratch anymore. We never start with nothing and build a new system. We always build on top of the existing components and we have to adapt the requirements to reflect what these components can do. Requirements engineering is also something that doesn't stop and then we move on to design and implementation. It's something that is carries on concurrently with design and implementation. As we design a system, we may discover problems with the requirements. We may discover, because of the analysis we do, issues and inconsistencies in the requirements. So there's a constant exchange of information between the design and implementation activity and the requirements engineering activity. This is an input-output view of the requirements engineering process or an information view that shows what goes into that process and what we get out of the process. Now this is very much geared for a critical systems requirements engineering process where we do produce a whole requirements document. An agile process is a bit different. We have much more of an iterative approach here where the requirements are developed iteratively. But as I've explained in other videos, this agile approach doesn't really work for critical systems where we need to do a very careful analysis of the requirements for safety, reliability and security. You can see here that the inputs for the process are not just from the system stakeholders. They're not just the system stakeholder needs, but they're also information about existing systems, organisational standards and other documents, regulations, 
information about the domain in which the system is going to be developed. So all of that, engineers have to assimilate all of that information and work with the stakeholders of the system to generate the process outputs. And these process outputs may be a set of agreed requirements, a high level description of what the system should do, and sometimes a much more detailed system specification when we need to do an analysis of a critical system, we need a more detailed reflection of the requirements, not simply uh, broad, vague statements of what we would expect from the system. Um, you may be familiar with the UML, the Unified Modeling Language, and sometimes the requirements engineering process generates models such as use case models. Conventionally, we think of there being four activities in the requirements engineering process. The first is requirements elicitation, where we're trying to discover what the requirements are. The information that we collect during the elicitation process has to be analysed, looking for inconsistencies and omissions, things, things we need to find out more. So there's a constant back and forward between elicitation and analysis to develop and refine the requirements. We then have to document these requirements. We have to write them down in such a way that they're understandable to both the system stakeholders and the system engineers. And this is one of the main problems why formal descriptions of a system have not been widely adopted. Because a formal system description in mathematics is often inaccessible to stakeholders. They can't be sure that it's an accurate description of their requirements. And the final stage of the requirements engineering process is validation, where we take these requirements back to the stakeholders and say, is this what you really want? And all of these are iterative processes. It's not something we do once. We go round and round a cycle where we develop the requirements in more and more detail. And this picture, a cyclic model or a spiral model of the requirements engineering process expresses this. We carry out these requirements engineering activities and add detail as we progress from the centre of the spiral and move outwards. This picture also captures a reality of requirements engineering, which is there's never enough time. In requirements engineering, we are time constrained. And essentially what we do is we go around this spiral, we add detail until we run out of time. We will never be finished. So we add detail until we run out of time and hope we've got enough for the system implementation. And as I've said, implementation problems that come from requirements, inconsistencies and omissions and incompleteness often arise because we haven't allowed enough time for the requirements engineering process. We haven't gone round this spiral enough times to actually make a difference. The requirements engineering process can be looked at from a range of perspectives. It can be looked at from the perspective of its relationship with other organisational processes, from the activities that are involved, from the documents that are involved, from an iteration pro perspective which shows how it is developed over time. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.